I used to think hacking was just for tech geniuses until I realized that there are individual hackers out there who gain access to systems in seconds that companies spend millions trying to protect. In fact, I can bet you that in the time it took you to open YouTube and click this video, somewhere a simple script was running that bypassed a Fortune 500 company's security and collected thousands of user credentials without anyone noticing. The truth is, if you know how to hack, you can see vulnerabilities everywhere that others miss completely. And if you learn how to use AI to help you find exploits, you can work even faster. But one thing is for sure, you actually have to sit down and learn cybersecurity fundamentals. Luckily, I'm going to save you from having to sift through all the overcomplicated advice on the internet written by self-proclaimed ethical hackers who took one CompTIA security course and then went on to buy a black hoodie, this mechanical keyboard and these hacktivist stickers to take dramatic photos of their Kali Linux setup, of course with only one terminal window open, running a basic port scan. Step 1. Instead of listening to them, just start by focusing on these key vulnerability classes. SQL injection for breaking into databases, XSS for attacking users, authentication bypasses for account takeovers, and privilege escalation for gaining full system control. It's a well-known fact that these vulnerabilities appear in almost every bug bounty program. Crazy, isn't it? If you have no money to start out and want to learn systematically, I recommend these three free resources. First, try HackMe's Complete Beginner Path. It covers practical exploitation with real VMs you can hack. Second, Port Swigger's Web Security Academy, hands down the best free web hacking labs from the makers of Burp Suite. Third, Pico CTF for gamified learning that teaches you actual exploit development. You get hands-on labs which you can use to at least start learning, but if you're more of a structured learner who learns better with a solid curriculum, assignments and support, you could get a degree or you could jump into a cybersecurity bootcamp. Nowadays, a lot of security teams don't really care if you have fancy certifications, as long as you're good at finding vulnerabilities and you have practical experience. And by the way, if you're serious about skipping the trial and error phase that holds most hackers back, grab my ultimate hacking cheat sheet bundle with everything you need to get started. This isn't just another generic resource, it's the exact command reference I've refined over years of offensive security work, with custom scripts, one-liner payloads, and bypass techniques that most pros don't even know exist. I've organized everything by hacking phases, so you can learn all essential terminal commands and techniques that hackers use to navigate systems and execute powerful attacks. The difference between finding nothing and finding a critical vulnerability is often just having the right command at your fingertips and it's perfect to have by your side when playing with Try Hack Me. So click the link in the description and reduce your learning curve from years into weeks. Focus on these essential tools that professionals actually use daily. Burp Suite, the Swiss army knife of web application testing. Nmap for network discovery. Metasploit, still the most reliable exploitation framework. Wireshark for seeing network traffic others miss. Hashcat for password cracking, FFUF, the web fuzzer that finds hidden endpoints, and Nuclei for automated scanning. Whatever you do, do not obsess over mastering every hacking tool. Hacking tools are pretty easy to learn, and once you know the methodology, it doesn't take a whole lot of effort to adapt to different tools. Some tools have fancy GUIs, meaning you can point and click your way through an attack. Others use command line interfaces because they're much faster when you need to chain them together with scripts. The syntax might differ, but the methodology doesn't. Reconnaissance, scanning, vulnerability analysis, exploitation, and post-exploitation are always the same five steps. But yeah, just learn these three burp suite features, the proxy, repeater, and intruder. Mastering just these three modules will make you more effective than most security testers who waste time with unnecessary plugins. You'll notice that the learning paths they give you are pretty long and detailed, but I'm going to be honest. You should focus on these high-value areas first. Authentication bypasses, authorization flaws, injection vulnerabilities, and server misconfigurations. The nice thing about Try Hack Me is that it always gives you somewhere to start. No nonsense, no fluff, no filler, no watching thousands of videos called If I wanted to be a hacker in 2079, here's what I would know. All you need to do is start with these specific rooms. SQL injection, OWASP top 10, Janior Penetration Tester, and Web Fundamentals. Complete just those four paths and you'll have more practical knowledge than most entry-level security analysts. Then immediately move on to step two. Build a portfolio by doing these five things. First, document vulnerable machine write-ups from practice platforms. 
Second, contribute to an open source security tool on GitHub, even a small documentation fix counts. Third, write a technical blog showing a vulnerability you discovered in a deliberately vulnerable application. Fourth, create a simple custom tool that automates a repetitive security task. Fifth, participate in a public CTF and share your solutions. For example, if you're a beginner in web security and you really like finding SQL injection vulnerabilities, then guess what? You can create a write-up showing how you found and exploited blind SQL injection in a vulnerable app, demonstrating the exact queries you used, how you automated extraction with tools, and what defensive coding practices would prevent it. This single write-up is worth more than a stack of generic certificates on your resume. It sounds simple, but I guarantee you it'll be way more complicated than you expect. You'll have to look up pretty much everything, and you will 100% be tempted to give up halfway through when your eyes are getting dry, your posture is deteriorating into freeform shapes, and you're wondering if maybe accounting isn't such a bad career after all. But ask anyone who's actually gotten good at hacking, and they'll tell you, once you can identify and exploit your first real vulnerability, you have now ascended from what's known as tutorial hell, CTF heaven, which is where all the accomplished hackers live and breathe. Just look at HackerOne's leaderboard. These elite hackers, finding critical vulnerabilities in major companies, started out running basic NMAP scans, just like everyone else. If you look at the first couple of bugs they found many years ago, they're pretty basic, something a beginner can find in a few days of scanning. But when you look at their newer reports, it's pretty easy to tell that their hacking skills got a little bit more advanced, and you can do the exact same thing as long as you put in the time and don't give up, even when that cybersecurity certification starts to look real tempting. One big reason you might feel disappointed in yourself when you first start learning to hack is because everyone else seems to know way more than you, and they talk about concepts you don't even know exist as if they're common sense. Sometimes you'll hear your favorite hacking YouTubers talking about reverse shells and weird exploits and acronyms and niche attack techniques and protocols that just make no sense because none of those things show up in an 8-hour ethical hacking for beginners YouTube tutorial. And although it may seem like some people were born knowing how to bypass WAFs and execute zero days and pivot through networks and how to create exploits out of thin air, it's really just a gradual learning process that takes a long time. You probably won't learn this stuff in school, you probably won't see it in textbooks, and it probably won't get recommended on your YouTube homepage, but you will learn it through hands-on practice and Googling and reading attack write-ups and adapting other people's exploits until you've created a fully functional attack chain. You won't become a hacking expert by watching YouTube tutorials back-to-back. -back. Instead, follow this formula. 20% learning concepts, 80% hands-on practice. And after each new technique you learn, immediately use it to hack several deliberately vulnerable machines designed for that specific attack. At the same time, everyone tells you to hack what you're passionate about. But what if you're just in it for the career prospects? Well, here are the highest paying specializations right now. Cloud security, application security, red teaming, threat hunting, and security architecture. For hands-on practice, look at the CTF challenges marked real world. These simulate actual vulnerabilities from recent breaches. The best part is they provide hints when you're stuck, but don't give away the solution. This forces you to develop the key skill every professional hacker needs, persistence through frustration. By now, you may be thinking, if tutorial hell is step one, and CTF practice is step two, then what's step three? OSCP Limbo and the certification game. If you don't know, OSCP is a hands-on certification where you hack into a network of vulnerable machines to demonstrate your skills. Unless you're applying to a position where the CISO is your college roommate, certifications matter for breaking into the industry. The secret is to get specific certifications in this order. Security Plus for baseline knowledge, EJPT for practical skills at entry level, and then either OSCP for offensive roles or SSCP for defensive positions. Being able to show these certifications is like a secret handshake in interviews. They want concrete proof you're capable before letting you near production systems. Instead of trying to assess your true hacking abilities in a brief interview, they check if you've passed these industry benchmarks. You've got those certifications, you walk in, they know you understand vulnerability assessment, exploitation, post-exploitation, and reporting, the four pillars of security testing. Now, is it the best system? Probably not, but it's what we've got. There's no magic way to prepare for security certifications. But here's a practical approach. First, don't just study theory, but practice on vulnerable machines that match the exam's difficulty. Second, 
Create your own methodical checklists for testing different services and applications. Third, build a personal knowledge base of commands and techniques. Fourth, practice writing professional reports for every machine you compromise. It might be intimidating to see people on YouTube passing OSCP on their first try, but remember, most spent months preparing intensively before even registering for the exam. Everyone starts somewhere, usually with basic enumeration scripts that don't even work half the time. And if all else fails, pivot to blue team. The defensive side is experiencing enormous growth in job openings and often has less grueling interview processes. Security operations roles can offer an excellent entry point to cybersecurity. If you've gotten value from this video, hit that like button and let me know what's stopping you from pursuing hacking in the comments. I might be able to guide you.